I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the time and the place for the regular board meeting of the Marshalltown School District, Monday, January 13th, 2020. Welcome to all of you who are visiting with us this evening, and welcome to those who will be watching us on delayed broadcast. Allow me to introduce the people at the table with me. From my right, we have Karina Hernandez, Bob Unteet, Sean Heitman. On my left, we have Jan McGinnis, Mike Miller, and Sarah Faltus. At the center table, to my right, is Paulette Newbold. She is the board secretary. And to my left is Dr. Theron Schutte, the superintendent of schools. And I'm B. Niblock. If you are here to address an item on the agenda, please make sure that you sign in uh, on the pink sheet at the speaker's table. If you are here to make comments during our public hearing, you will not need to sign in, but when you come to the speaker's table to speak, please state your name, spell it, and give us your address, please, so that the board secretary will have that information. Please read with me the Marshalltown uh, mission. We develop, develop learners who have, have the knowledge, skills, and positive mindset to successfully pursue a meaningful future through personalized learning experiences. And stand as you're able and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, <laughs> are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? Uh, there are. Uh, under 2.02, .02, we'll have an additional uh, person in position for hire, Don DePas, 21st Century Community Learning Center paraeducator at Franklin Elementary School. In uh, section 4.05, uh, we need to remove one name from the list of early graduates, Derek Neuroth. And 7.06, we will have an additional um, student come before us for readmittance. May I have a motion to approve <coughs> the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Miller Heitman, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. The motion carries 7 0. Mr. Sires. Hello, everyone. We are going to have Dr. Stevenson uh, speak about the 21st century, or I'm sorry, seal of bioliteracy by for 2020. Sorry, I know I had a deer in the headlights. I was thinking <laughs> at risk already. This is too soon. Um, so in the um, information you received, we are able to honor some <clears throat> of our students with the Seal of Biliteracy already who went ahead and um, with the help of the <coughs> language teachers and ESL teachers um, took the stamp exam earlier in December. So <clears throat> last year was the first year that we were able to issue the Seal of Biliteracy to our juniors or seniors. And uh, we laid out what we thought was a pretty good plan, um, which required quite a bit of assessment on the seniors part towards the end of their school year, fourth quarter primarily. Um, and that didn't allow us as much time for um, students to be able to reassess in some of the domains that they were not um, biliterate or considered intermediate in yet. And so the team got together this fall and decided to, to look at it and how could we make this better for kids. And so we um, thought we would do a first run of seal of biliteracy students at the middle of the year. So that was the testing that you saw in December um, and the results, which are, are pretty promising. So there'll be even more students that will identify second semester that we'll get to test and, and we'll have a final list for you in June. Thank you. Yes. I will open the public hearing regarding the approval of the plans, specifications, form of contract, 
and the estimated total cost for the Marshalltown Community School District Tennis Court Project. Is there anyone that would like to speak? We did have a letter submitted, I believe. Yes, we have one written submission. <laughs> We had one written submission um, for the public hearing. Um, it states, MCSD Board, my name is Bobby Sh Shomo, 1706 Hillcrest Road, Marshalltown, Iowa, 50158. I am sorry I cannot be present tonight as I'm in Mason City supporting the Bobcat basketball team as we make up Friday's postponed game. As most of you know, I am also one of the MHS soccer coaches. You also know that we have our own set of facility needs in order to satisfy the Iowa High School Athletic Association's criteria to host postseason games. In light of that need, I have been asked if the project to address the tennis courts and their immediate need is frustrating to me. I've posted my thoughts on Facebook, but want to make sure that each of you are aware of my thoughts tonight. I think I've earned the right to express my opinion. I am 100% in support of this project to address our tennis needs. I would like to congratulate Coach Christensen and the other tennis coaches on their excellent program and student participation. In an era where student participation is on a downward trend, our MHS tennis program is generating tremendous numbers, and I feel that we as a district owe it to our students to give them the facilities they need to participate. You, as am I, are aware that extracurricular activities are a significant factor in our students' academic success, as well as preparing them for life with skills such as leadership, teamwork, and learning how to both win and lose with grace. I am also aware that not everyone in the community shares my position. I followed with interest as this very local, vocal minority group sought to secure the 900 plus signatures to bring this to a community vote. Their campaign for signatures was aggressive, but when the dust settled, the group was not able to garner even half of the sig signatures needed to bring this to a vote. <clears throat> As a board, I would hope that signals loudly and clearly to you that the community as a whole stands behind this project and wishes it to move forward. I am a parent who now has a son gainfully employed as a full-time head tennis professional in Scottsdale, Arizona. This vocational achievement was squarely rooted in the MHS tennis program during his high school career. MHS tennis helped earn him a college scholarship and ultimately a college education and career. Please do not sell short the necessity of extracurriculars and how they impact our students' lives. Lastly, I hope you will continue to seek the City of Marshalltown's partnership for future phases of this development, as this project benefits not just the school district, but our community as a whole. Thank you to each of you for your service. You have an extremely hard and often unappreciated position as board members. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Bobby Shomo. Thank you. Other comments? Please come forward. Have a seat at the speaker's table and use the microphone. You don't need to sign. You're just going to tell us who you are and where you live. Okay. You have to tell them. You have to tell them first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Markeen McKibben, M-A-R-K-I-N-C-K-I-B-B-E-N. And Larry, my husband, Larry McKibben. You want to spell his name? We got to have an address. <laughs> 1703 Robertson Drive, Marshalltown. Well, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you all for the services that you give. Uh, having been in these services uh, a few years ago, which I'm not going to tell you, other than I was a bobcat that moved to the new facilities in 1965 uh, with our entire class. It was one of the greatest things that we did as, as bobcats and Marshalltown people when we started the new facilities. Uh, at the time, we also put facilities together outside for athletics. Uh, they did a fantastic job. That was part of what we did and what our community did and what the people that found, it, found the monies to do those things did. Uh, we have been blessed by having a, a son and a daughter and, and grandson, grandchildren, grandsons, uh, 
in the last three years, we've had a great opportunity to come to tennis facilities. And we've had a great opportunity to come to tennis facilities uh, throughout our district area. And I can tell you for a fact that I was embarrassed when a lot of those, those uh, folks came to, to our facilities. Because when I go to baseball games or football games or basketball games, I see the facilities that we have. And when I went to the tennis facilities, I saw young people slip and fall. I saw people got, saw young men from district, other districts that were playing got hurt. And that, that's a fact. Uh, both Marky and I saw that, right? And we went, and, and maybe you can tell them a little bit about when we go to the other facilities, sometimes you have to go to the restroom. And what, what do you compare that with? Yes, uh, here, at, for those of you that don't know, here at MHS we have one outside porta potty, unisex. And that's embarrassing. There, when we went to the other facilities, there were nice restrooms, they were lighted. They had bleachers that you could sit on, which our facility has very few. They have a couple of benches. Um, 13th Street was closed and made into other facilities for different sport there. So that made our uh, B squad have to share the facility here at the high school. And that cut into uh, the evening time when the lighting got really bad. We have no lights there. Uh, so they were cut short. Uh, some of the, the A team went overtime, so then there, therefore it was a hindrance to the B squad as they had to complete their, their games as well. So tennis is something like bowling and like golf, tennis, they, you can play that all your life. Tell your old people like we are. Um, it's something that needs to be cultivated in our youth so that they have that experience and they can realize that yes, this is something I can do and carry it on into their adult life. I think it's very much needed that this facility be updated uh, and and be a part of our community, not only for the school people, but for anyone enjoying tennis in general. And the other thing, when we started these facilities a long time ago, they're com community facilities uh, used by communities, not not just tied up by the high school or the school facilities. Uh, they were a part of the community. We noticed the same thing when we went to other uh, events that they used a lot of those facilities for for uh, their communities also. Uh, they also had tournaments at the other facilities uh, when we were over at, uh, at those facilities. And there's no, as I understand it, there's no way that we can have one of those uh, in Marshalltown. Well, you have one of those tournaments and, and, and activities, what are you doing? You're bringing people to Marshalltown. What are they doing? They're eating food here. They're looking at our community inside when they come. The same thing, whether it's a football or basketball or baseball or whatever it is, it's, it's, it's good for our community to have facilities that look like this. I've been following uh, on the news. I don't exactly know what you're all doing, but I've been following it on the news, and I appreciate what you, both Marky and I appreciate what you've been doing. Uh, we think this is a collaborative event that should be between our community uh, and also uh, our school system. And I think that's the direction you all are working. I appreciate uh, the superintendent working in that direction because I think he's spot on uh, in the way that he is handling it and directing the, the folks that are here. So uh, we are here, as you can obviously hear, we, we stand for it. Our, our grandson's now at Iowa State University, so it's, we're not buying something for us right now. We're looking at the next generation. And, and as a bobcat, uh, from way back when, I know how important it is for our community to have great athletics, great facilities, and pride. We always had pride. Uh, in fact, back in my days, superintendent might say the same thing, we probably had more pride than anybody else uh, when we went to facilities and that type of thing. 
and I hope we keep that. I see this that we're doing it with the additions to the roundhouse and, and other things that you're doing. So uh, both Marky and I appreciate it. We, we ask for your support here on the board. We ask for you to move forward through this. Uh, I hope that the, the city council also knows that that is an important thing that you're doing and they participate. And if you're going to do something, the other thing I always believe when you're going to do something, let's do it right the first time. <laughs> I've, my father always told that, uh, told me, Larry, if you're going to do it right, you do it right the first time. And that's the same thing I've always known, and, and I'm going to say that today. If we're going to do this, I simply ask you all to do it the right way. Thank you so much for what you do. Others? Then I close the public hearing. Moving to the consent agenda. Looking at the minutes for December 16th, are there any additions or corrections? Are there any items of note in personnel, Dr. Schutte? Uh, yes, sir. We have six requests to take advantage of the voluntary early retirement program. Um, we have a lot of years of experience and quality service uh, that has requested this uh, within both the teaching ranks as well as our buildings and grounds department. So just take a minute to highlight these people. Um, Eldon Stanley has been with B&G Department since 1989. He was a long time lead custodian at the high school, but most recently has been serving the district as a mechanic. Eldon brings a very diverse set of talents and is always willing to go above and beyond for the team. Loma Green. Loma has been a great employee for the district for over 31 years. Um, she is a custodian at Hoagland, the daytime custodian. Travis James said she will be a very hard custodian to replace. She's a very dependable, hard worker, and I know I've personally enjoyed getting to know Loma through the labor management team meetings as well. Uh, the past three and a half years. James Copel is the longest serving B&G employee in the department, having served 33 years with the school district. He is a can-do maintenance utility worker, always willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. He is highly respected by his peers. And Scott Bittner. Scott has worked for the district for nearly 24 years. He has been characterized as very dependable, and his work has always been solid. He is a hard worker and cares about the little details. <clears throat> At Lenahan Intermediate School, we have two teachers that have requested voluntary early retirement, Julie Preston and Pam Munch. Principal Kyle Young uh, states that Pam and Julie are two of the hardest working educators he's had the opportunity to work with. Pam has done a fabulous, fabulous job at making every student, um, making sure that every student has a high quality art education. Her routines and class structure is something every educator would benefit from observing. Julie's passion and high expectations for learning that uh, have positively impacted Lemahan in, in the short amount of time that she's been in the building. She does an amazing job of keeping her students engaged at all times during the lesson and creates a classroom where students demonstrate their learning constantly. Both uh, Julie and Pam have made Lenahan Intermediate School a better place due to their commitment to learning and world-class organizational skills. Both individuals have served our district since 2000. Thank you. Looking at interagency agreements and contracts, we have um, a cost reimbursement agreement for the STEM Best Program Enhancement Award in the amount of $10,000 for Marshalltown Learning Academy. We have a grant from the Martha Ellen Ty Foundation in the amount of $150,000 for the tennis complex project pickleball courts. We have a student teaching affiliation agreement with Grand Canyon University. We have a field experiment experience and student teaching agreement with Upper Iowa. We have a participant agreement with the IRA Veterans Home for the Registered Apprenticeship Program. 
We have uh, use agreements with Iowa Valley for um, two professional development trainings. We have one Sioux City, uh, one student going to Sioux City uh, Community Schools. Looking at open enrollments, we have one student out um, for the remainder of this year. We have one, uh, two students out for the next year, and we have a recommended denial for six students because they <coughs> do not qualify for cr criteria under the good cause. Are there any items of note in bills? Any questions from the board on the bills? We have gifts, grants, and bequests, a donation from the Central Iowa Square and Round Dancers, the amount of $670 towards Rogers Elementary. We have a grant from Modern Woodman in the amount of $2,500 for new marching band uniforms. Are there any questions on the monthly financial report? May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Faltus Unteed. It was me, but we can give it to Bob. Okay. Yeah, Heitman. We're going to put Karina between you two or something <laughs> so that we separate those voices. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the same. The motion carries 7-0. Moving on to public comment. Is anyone listed? No. No. Moving on to the education section of our meeting. Mrs. Lyon. Good evening. I have brought a large contingency from our IA Tech Department. So teachers and students will present the work that they have been doing and how they are growing this program. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. My name is uh, George Melendez. And, uh, you can just pull it up closer. I'm not sure no, it's, it's on. Not on. <coughs> I don't think it's on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My name is George Melendez, and uh, I'm a junior at Marshtown High School. Oh. <laughs> I'm in the class of Construction Tech 2, and uh, we got to learn a lot of stuff in that class, you know. There's a point where there's a shed that I got to bring all my classmates, and then it was just a shed that had no siding, no roofing. Uh, with, uh, with the knowledge of my teacher, we got to learn how to do vinyl siding, how to do framing for the door. Um, we got to do how to install walls, install windows, doors. We got to re, uh, safely, safely remove walls and cabinets and learn, learn how to apply drywall and mud, which is, we could use that towards the future. Um, I, got to, <coughs> I, got to, I got to socialize more with students. I got to meet new students, made friendships and everything. And that's about it. I'm Raul Revelo, and I, I'm the construction tech two, uh, construction, uh, construction tech two, a teacher, and uh, I do the intro to construction, the construction technology one, and the construction technology two at the high school. And um, George is one of my students, and we also did um, um, a couple other projects, and we did bring um, some a project here, an example, and I'll let Roxy and Anna uh, talk a little bit more about that and introduce themselves. Is this on? Yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Anna Nolasco, and I took part of intro Introduction to Construction this year, and I'll let her introduce herself, and then we'll begin. 
Hi, my name is Roxana Oriana, and I'm a senior, and I'm also in Mr. Rivolo's Intro to Construction class. I'm a senior, and I'm in Mr. Katner's class. I forgot about that. So do you want to begin? Do you want me to begin? <laughs> OK. So some things that we started off with in Intro to Construction was obviously um, safety rules, learning all the safety materials beforehand because it's very important to know your stuff and know what you're getting into, the safety issues, what you need to wear, and everything beforehand because obviously as our teachers have taught us, safety is a big issue when you're going to work with um, panel saws, table saws, and all of those things. We try and keep all our fingers together. <laughs> but, and on. And on, yeah. We try to start... Um, leave off with as many as we started. <laughs> but um, after learning about safety and all that, we went around and we had a piece of wood where we learned how to use every single saw or machinery that was there as if it was sanding, a uh, table saw, drill press, and so on. After that, we got a, like a big piece of wood, a <clears throat> pile of wood, and we decided, we started to cut off certain materials using different machinery to, this is hers, <laughs> she did an amazing job. But we started to like cut off different pieces, sanding them, refining them, and being able to like put it all together to create, well, hers is amazing, so an amazing project. It's a bench that can actually hold up a lot, but it's kind of wet, so we can't demonstrate that. I put on it this morning. And then I'm gonna put the finish after it dries. The microphone will come out of there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I just put epoxy on it this morning, and so it's still not complete. And so after it dries, I'll put finish on it so it'll look way nicer. But it's, do you want me to keep going? So, uh, <laughs> so after we practice with. Uh, making sure that we know how to use all the machines with the board that we practice with. We use a panel saw to cut out all these pieces from a whole sheet of wood. So we have just enough just for these pieces. And then we, also, we use a table saw to cut out the top and the sides. And then we use the band saw. So we cut out we cut the sides of the stool, and then we cut the bottom down here, so we could also hold it from there. And then we also use a drill, a drill press, so we can cut holes up here. And I also used it to cut this little design over here on the sides. And then we use a jigsaw to finish cutting the round part to, as also a handle. And then a spindle saw to make sure it's smooth around the corners down here as well. And I used it for to make it smoother down here in the corners. And then a miter saw to cut the railings at 10 degrees on each of them here as well. And then we a router table to make the edges of the top and I use them on the railings as well and down here to make it round so it's not as sharp. And then after I put all the designs on it and got it how plain like this, I used a orbital sander to make sure everything's smooth and there's no rough edges or anything so it'd be easy and not look as rough. Smooth. Oh, well, through this experience and these projects, we've learned a lot, not only about Woods class, we also got to visit some places such as a construction site that they talked about more than just wood tech. They talked about <coughs> actual construction, different fields that you can go into, different job opportunities. And I think it's a very important thing for some people who might choose or not choose to go to college. But it's also just an everyday type of thing. For example, us as females, they don't really um, evolve construction with us. Most of the time, if you have like 
something breaks at your house, you tend to call someone. But with these classes, you get to learn about how to fix them yourself, how to handle yourself, how to be an independent woman <laughs> or man. So it's very helpful, not only in the learning aspects, but in the everyday type of thing. And yeah. <laughs> My name's Emily Diggins. I'm a junior at the high school. I'll trade you spots. Trade me spots. All my stuff's over here. So I'll just chill here. Um, I'm in Mr. Kadner's class. I'm taking the electrical and plumbing class. And me being a girl, it's kind of shocking, but I want to be a plumber. And not a lot of people accept that, but Kadner was really open to teaching me how to do plumbing. So it's a really simple class. It's an easy A if you want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> so <laughs> we started the year with electrical, and then we halfway through the year, we did plumbing after that. So what we started with was just taking some simple wire and stripping it and then doing a T joint and then soldering it with solder and then a crisscross like twist joint and then soldering that as well and then we did circuit boards where there are these like boards where you get to put a outlet some light we had our first one was in one outlet one light switch and a light and you had to make it so it would work and not explode on you and then we did group projects where we did a double circuit where we did two outlets, two light switches, two light bulbs, and we had to get them to all work together. And we had a little mishap with this kid in my, my group. He got, like, soot all over his white shirt, and it was this big deal. But it was pretty fun, though. And then we learned how to wire a house, so we got to work on that. And then we started basically doing the construction part of this giant, like, structure of our vanity so we made two of them we made a bathroom one kind of which was a small bathroom vanity a sink and then a toilet and then another one which was a like double sink with another toilet and we had to if you look at the pictures you'll see what she's talking about i had the kids build a wall section with a double sink a toilet and then as if they were doing a bathroom with a vanity and sink they had to wire it and plumb it and so that was what we were all working to do. And that's, so we got a first, we learned how to do, we cut PVC pipe and then we primed it, then we glued it. And then we would run water through it to see if it worked. And they, all of ours worked after the first try. Then we did the PEX pipe where we cut PEX pipe. We put a corner joint on it and then we put uh, joints on them and then clamped those down and then ran water through it to see if those worked, which they mostly did. Then we took copper pipe and we, prime, we would prime it with grease and then we soldered them and then we'd run water through it and they all worked. And then we threaded metal like pipes and that was the hardest one because it's not that easy to push down. And then we, this is from today, so it's, we had a vanity, and we tried out our double sink vanity today because we finished everything, we finished all the pipes, and we were like, okay, we're going to put water in the tank, hopefully it'll work. And so we tried the first time, didn't go down because there wasn't enough water, so then we put more water in, still didn't work, put more water in, and at one point we just got tired, and one of the kids in my class just grabbed a bucket full of water and dumped it in and it was too much water, and he flushed it, and water went everywhere, and it kind of flooded the basement. Not that much, it was just water everywhere. And it was chaotic, and we're all freaking out laughing. And then another kid was trying to get away from the water and stepped on the other vanity and broke the wheel, and it was this giant thing, and it was really funny. And so then we had to, now we're dismantling it tomorrow, so that'll be all good. Um, it is one of my favorite classes, One, it's like, a really fun class, it's easy A, so I would highly recommend it for other kids. 
But my favorite memory and the thing that I will never forget to this day is, so in the very beginning of class, we learned tools and all the tools you'll need to know. And most people know this for a crescent wrench. And I've known it as a crescent wrench all of my life. And then he yelled at me and said, no, it's an adjustable wrench, it's an adjustable wrench. He said, if you call it an adjustable wrench, you're gonna probably get fired because it's an adjustable wrench, not a crescent wrench. And so crescent wrench is the actual like brand name of it instead of the actual thing. But I highly recommend this class, it's really fun. And he makes it fun, so. Uh, my name's Keegan Gorsuch. Um, I'm a sophomore. <coughs> I take <coughs> uh, I take Mr. Kadner's medals class. also took metals last year and it was like we used a lot of the hand tools we didn't really use much of the machines um, this year we we got taught how to use the lathes and all the drill presses and everything and then once we got familiarized with them we made like hammers and stuff like this is one of the hammers I made um, and then we also we did a lot of other stuff. We made a couple hammers. We made a little, like, plastic hammer. There's actually one of them up on the picture. Um, and then one of my other projects was making this crowbar or pry bar, which we just took um, uh, this hex bar, and then we heated it up, shaped the ends, and then after we were done with that, we bent it into shape and cleaned it up. Um, Mr. Kadner's class was it was really fun this year, and I really enjoyed it. I only had one other kid in my class, but we had a lot of fun, and it was just it was a very educational experience. I learned about a lot about all the tools, and um, Mr. Kadner's a very good teacher. Helped us out a lot. And overall, it was just a great class. Another easy A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He makes it understandable, so they're easy A's. Yeah, he does. Next slide. It's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Do this. What's new? Slide eight. Okay, I guess this is my turn to talk. I am Mr. Lester Kadner, Industrial Tech. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I'm Mr. Kadner, industrial tech, uh, about 30 some years experience. When I came to the district, part of my philosophy is hands-on, as you can see from the projects here and the kids. Uh, easy if you want to call it that way, but if they learn the tools and we don't have to call them stubby, I'm comfortable. <laughs> and they'll take it with them the rest of their life. Um, we're gonna start a couple more classes next year. My main background is automotive. We're going to start up a small engines and basic automotive so that like the young ladies can take automotive and know whether they're getting ripped off or their car's getting worked on, how to change your oil, how to change a headlight, you know, basic maintenance things that kids can take with them. Um, on the next slide that you saw the plasma cutter, we are in the process, I am in the process of having Emerson come in, work with me to show me how to run that machine so the kids can start learning how to use a plaza, CNC plasma control machine. Uh, the bench the young lady had here, she used a CNC router, computer numeric controlled router, to actually cut that design in, which is something that Raul and I have been working on this year. So. Can we go to the next slide? This one's actually Okay, so um, some of the things that we just wanted to bring up were, <clears throat> but as far as the construction tools, um, we have a lot of great woodworking tools and that we can create projects like this. Um, as we go on into Construction Tech 1 and Construction Tech 2 from our intro class, we start looking at blueprints and building um, 
uh, like walls and you know sheds. And then construction tech two, we start look, going into, uh, like George said, going out into uh, out into job sites where we do sheds and um, do cabinets at a at a home um, for one of our community members here in town. And so. Um, what we've run into is a really high uh, need of construction tools. Uh, we have, again, a lot of woodworking tools, um, but as far as that, that just covers uh, intro, to, intro to construction. <coughs> and so as far as, you know, moving forward, <clears throat> we, you know, just want to raise awareness of the need for the construction tools. Um, and the, the space as well. Um, that's our last point on there. Um, kind of the students have been, you know, brainstorming, thinking maybe we can pre-sell uh, sheds and start building sheds, but you know that would be very limited with the winters that we have here in Iowa. Um, <coughs> well, I guess now, but um, and we don't really have the space indoors to uh, create something like that, and you know then to haul it away. So just wanted to bring those up to. Uh, you see the foundry up there on top. I was excited when I took the job. I worked in a foundry for about three and a half years up in Cedar Falls. I uh, had a design made out for a hacksaw the kids could pour an aluminum handle. Went in, had them start making the molds. Lo and behold, the foundry doesn't work. It's got a crack in it. It has been tagged out, so it can't be fixed. Something to look at in the future is either maybe we can look at fixing that or maybe doing away with that and getting some kind of a CNC or a forming machine that we can make that handle and still carry that project. Questions for our students or staff? Can I see the top of the bench? <clears throat> I say that was cut on a CNC. She actually did the designing on the computer and then sent it out to the machine and cut it. And all of the kids are supposed to be working on something like that. Uh, the bench is a project I brought with me from Council Bluffs where I taught. Um, that thing is designed so that uh, it'll hold about 1,400 pounds. You can, a former teacher I taught with had nine kids toe-to-toe, -to -toe, grab hands, stand on top of it. I've had kids take it home and a parent literally jump on it in the living room trying to break it. And if they're glued together and put together right, they'll hold some weight. They'll have that the rest of their life. Other questions? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for thank your you. time. Thank you. <laughs> Laura, Kate, whoever is here with our Lego team. <coughs> and this comes out of here? Yep. That one's a mobile one. Okay, that's what we're Okay, I'm Laura Fricke, and actually I'm a volunteer. This is an after-school group that's um, coached by myself and Kate Niederman. She's not here tonight. But two parents, volunteers, would be right here. And is Reggie here? And Reggie Curian and Matt Morrison. So I help with the project. They do the robotics. We all work on team values. And we went to state last year. And this year we're going to state on Saturday. So we're really excited. And we were chosen for, what we were chosen for was Global Innovative Technology. The project that these students chose and the research that they did, the judges found innovative. So they're gonna tell you about that and then they'll be open for questions. Do you wanna set that down so that we can mm -hmm. see? You wanna see the kids? Part. This design's really good, but yes. So kids, I'm gonna put it down here. We can't see our, all the other notes. We have their notes on the back. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. R&B. <laughs> you can switch it to the end of the table, and then they'll be able to see them. So you guys put it where they, so they want to see your face when you're talking to them, so you guys will move accordingly, okay? And so Porter, and they presented before, and part of their job is to share this with community members and get questions back, and um, that, that will help us in our presentation on Saturday even. Okay, so Porter, you want to go? Hello, we're the Wizard Engineers. We're from Marshall Farm, Iowa. The members of the Wizard Engineers... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead and give him the microphone. This year we innovated a problem, invented yeah, a problem that affects many families in our community. Children need a safe and affordable place to grow up and have fun. We designed a solution that involves creating a splash pad. We shared our idea with developer Jeff Mitchell, and now we share our vision with you. Here you go. One of the problems that splash pads solve is affordability. People can't afford to go to regular pools or, or aquatic centers. The families that can't afford to, to pay for a Y aquatic center membership may decide to go to places that are that to go to more dangerous places that are not safe for anyone. People need a way to cool off on hot days if they don't have air conditioning. Air conditioning, as you can see, the river can cost you your life. The Marshalltown Y membership costs $864 per year, whereas the Marshalltown Family Aquatic Center costs $205 for a family of four. The safest, safest and most affordable option is a splash pad. About four, about four years ago, some kids drowned in the Iowa River. They drowned because they couldn't afford or find a safe place to swim. That's sad because on hot summer days, kids need a safe place to cool off. Splash pads is safe, fun, and affordable for all. This includes people of all ages and abilities. There are only so many activities in a town. People of all ages and abilities need somewhere fun to go and to cool off in the summer. Splash pads are a great place to go to hang out with friends or just for a meeting place. Splash pads have all three problems. They are safe, affordable, and provide more inclusive activities for all ages. In Marshalltown, there's half a mall, two movie theaters, four ice cream shops, five school playgrounds, 20 city playgrounds, three golf courses, two public pools, and zero splash pads. And the population in Marshalltown is 27,068. To solve these problems, we will build a sustainable splash pad powered by solar energy in downtown Marshalltown. To help with the finances, we will be writing grants and accepting donations. Having the splash pad in our town will help beautify downtown Marshalltown, which was hit by the tornado two summers ago. Our splash pad will bring more people downtown, which will help our local businesses recover. One addition to the solution is a stormwater collection system. This component has a vortex filter that separates debris and filters water to be stored underground in a collection tank. This recycles water and greatly reduces the operation costs. In this drawing, there is a cabana with a solar panel on top. This is so we don't have to pay for energy. It is also a good place to put it so we don't have a random solar panel in our splash pad. The cabana is also a great place for parents to watch their kids have fun in the sun. The solar panel powers the filter, ir irrigation system, and water pumps. We will use the solar energy and connect it to an inverter which creates the electricity. The electricity connects to a water pump to get the water flowing through the wizard fountain and the additional fountain. Then the water goes through the drainage system, through a collection tank, and a filter which goes back to the water pump and cycles again. Our project idea was sparked by a tragedy that our community experienced a, f a few years ago when seven, seven children drowned while swimming in a local river. Many families in our community cannot afford to pay a monthly membership to the YMCA or pay to go to the local aquatic center every day. But the, y but the YMCA has tried to help. Our project proposes a safe alternative for young families who do not have a lot of options if they want to play or cool off around water. Thank you for listening. Questions? This weekend is the state um, tournament, is that what we call it? Yeah. yeah, and where is that located again? In the Iowa State. Yeah. You going to win? All right. <laughs> Good attitude. Good luck.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Well, you're all alone today. I am. <laughs> we'll be back next time. So the first slide that we have is for MCC classes. So today is the first day of the spring uh, semester classes at MCC and online. This kind of, kind of interferes with our finals for this week also, but we have the opportunity to talk to our teachers and have that schedule be a little flexible since we will be able to, that way we, we are able to study for our finals and still have our um, academic stuff done for MCC. We also have more students on the MCC campus this semester. So this, this question was asked to several students on, on the MHS campus. Um, one student said the following, if you would like to read the quote. Doesn't sound like it's an easy A like the last class. <laughs> but it's well worth it. <laughs> <clears throat> For upcoming sports, on Tuesday there is a boys and girls basketball at the high school. On Thursday there is a bowling, swimming, wrestling, and ninth grade basketball. On Friday there is a basketball home game and a dance team senior <coughs> night. This week, during uh, our open times for finals, we are supposed to have a meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Mrs. Arevalo or Ms. Gardelin um, about the four bullet points that you see above. We are asked if we have finished the FAFSA or if we have not started so they can have someone help us if we need help. Dual credit courses, if we want to take dual, credits, dual credit classes or um, go to campus on the MCC campus and take them there. Scholarship applications, if we need help to get references or don't know how to apply for one, and if we are on track to graduate. As I said before, finals are this week, starting tomorrow and through Thursday. Uh, students are preparing for the exams for the first semester. The quote I have there is from a freshman from MHS who has never taken uh, finals before, but, um, you know, they want to pass, like all of us, but, um, you know, it's it's because I know them personally, and it was good to reassure them that it was going to be okay. <laughs> so on January 9th, uh, students participated by wearing orange or the Pablo shirts that were pur purchased last year in support of Pablo, who is uh, Mr. Martinez, a PE educator's child who uh, has leukemia. Um, so we wore <coughs> orange that day to commemorate his last chemotherapy treatment. On December 20th, students dressed up in outfits and sweaters to celebrate the festive season. Usually um, we saw people wearing uh, <coughs> holiday sweaters to full-on suits and outfits um, to celebrate. And also in the morning, student senate gave out candies which were candy canes to students at the front door to celebrate the holidays. Poetry Out Loud students, four students competed in the 12th annual poetry contest with Olivia Adam Smolik coming in first place. She will represent MHS at the Iowa po Poetry Out Loud competition in Des Moines. Uh, the following quote is from Ashlyn, who is a senior who got third place tied with Carmen, who is one of our student reps. The Smash Bros. tournament was earlier this month. It turned out to be a big thing among all of, all of the grades, especially the boys. Um, I was told that there were many participants, and it was all everyone really was talking about during that week that was happening. What is the Smash Bros.? <laughs> so it is a game made by Nintendo, so uh, a couple of sophomores 
um, decided to hold a tournament um, and compete with other students to see who was the best one in the game. I do apologize for this sli empty slide. One of our student reps did not finish. So I don't know what this one's about. <laughs> For band, the state jazz, uh, uh, state jazz is on January 27th. Annual pa the annual pasta dinner is on January 28th, and the Simpson Honor Band is on January 16th. Questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, as you might remember, back in December at the second board meeting, I presented um, an informational item for you, and that was our at-risk budget for the 2021 school year. <clears throat> and so this board, board meeting, I'm asking for your approval um, of the requested amount. So as a reminder, um, for fiscal year 21, um, <clears throat> our MSA request is one million five hundred seventy four thousand three hundred fifty two dollars that amount represents an eight cent increase so our amount for fiscal year 20 was a dollar 29 our tax rate i'm sorry and it's increasing to a dollar 37 and that 1.5 or close to 1.6 million covers um <clears throat> many salaries and benefits in our summer programming ijag um, at-risk curriculum that we've purchased, our juvenile court liaisons, our MLA costs, et cetera. So with that, I'm asking um, for approval to submit this MSA amount. Questions for Dr. Stevenson? You talked, um, boy, it's been a month or so ago, about mm -hmm. uh, absenteeism as being a big problem and communicating with parents about absenteeism. Um, is there anything more that we could or should be doing there and could it be paid for in this budget? I think there's always ways that we look to do more. Um, I think for next year our main focus for absenteeism will be to use um, the federal grant we have, the full service community schools at the elementary, <clears throat> in addition to our K-12 social workers that we already have and counselors. Um, every building has an attendance team of sorts that meets regularly to review chronic absenteeism. Um, it's definitely allowable to use this type of money to address chronic absenteeism and hopefully in the future um, we can maybe add to this amount in future years um, for personnel or programs that are specifically designed um, to address the amount or to address the issue of chronic absenteeism. Other questions? I have a motion to approve the at-risk budget of 2021 as presented. So moved. Second. Auntie McGinnis. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. The motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie, do you want to speak to the list of early grads? Thank you. As Dr. Schutte has already pointed out, we did have one amendment. Um, Tyler decided that he wanted to stay one more semester at the high school so he could take advantage of classes at MCC, which is certainly something that we would encourage most of our students to take advantage of a scholarship, really, is what they're receiving from the district when they, when they do that. Um, the list of students that you have before you include seniors who are, hope, are hopeful that they will finish in time for um, end of the semester, which is this Thursday. 
Um, again, I'm saying hopeful because most of them are on track. They just have to make sure that they get that passing grade and make their 22 credit required credits. Our juniors are students who have asked for acceleration. They've asked to graduate one year early and graduate with the class of um, 2020 instead of waiting till 2021. Um, again, they're hopeful. There, there's sometimes that that doesn't quite work out by the time that they get to the end of the second semester of this this year, and so of course we will hang on to them and help them through to next year, and they may become a mid-year grad next year. But these are all hopeful graduates. Questions for Mrs. Wyan? Do we make the motion tonight subject to their actually completing successfully Correct. by Thursday? Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. I'll make that motion subject to <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Meeting the Marshall Town Community School District graduation requirements. That's what I said. <laughs> Second. Miller, Unteed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same. Motion carries 7 0. I'd like to invite Amy Harmson. To Come forward. It's my pleasure to introduce as well as to recommend the hiring of Mrs. Amy Harmson for the position of Director of Technology for the Marshtown Community School District and an annual salary of 98000 with a desired and anticipated start date of Monday, February 13th, 2020, contingent on a release from Grinnell Community Schools and successful criminal background check. Um, as was shared through news and notes, Amy and the other candidates went through a very rigorous uh, selection process. She um, has been the director of technology for Grinnell Newburg Community Schools for the past three and a half years. She had previously served in Marshtown as a technology services coordinator with the Central Rivers Area Education Agency, working with ours and other uh, technology directors providing support in both technical and educational technology services. Mrs. Harmson holds a master's degree from Iowa, from the Iowa State University in <laughs> curriculum and instructional technology and an undergrad degree majoring in journalism and Spanish with a minor in international studies. Um, Amy would will replace Josh Wesley who left the district to assume a similar position with the Waukee Community School District. Do you have some comments that you'd like to make? <laughs> Just how excited I am for this opportunity. I was raised around here, so I'm glad to be back. Comments, questions from the board? Is it, is it really the Iowa State University? <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> We have a Hawkeye fan over there? I just, it sounds like Ohio you, State you, you or something. Over there. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> Ohio over State, there. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I have a motion to approve the recommendation for the Director of Technology for the Marshalltown Community School District. So moved. Second. Altus Hernandez, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same. Motion carries 7 0. Welcome aboard. <laughs> I don't know it was more nerve-wracking her coming forward tonight or the uh, panel interview she had last <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you going to do Matt's? I can, I can speak towards this okay. one as Matt wasn't able to be here tonight. Um, you may recall in December we actually approved a similar request for the River Hills um, Consortium program that we participate in. This is actually the same thing for the Grand Wood Consortium program. We are just requesting approval from the board um, so that $2,582.69 of administrative costs for this consortium can be coded um, to special ed. Questions for Paula? What may would you use a microphone, please? Can you explain what this is? Um, yes, typically, well, under special ed law, administrative costs can for um, directors of special ed and such cannot be charged to the special ed deficit. With consortiums, there's some different rules that they've set. So this allows, with approval from the board, um, for the our portion of the administrative costs of the consortium, 
to be coded accordingly. Other questions? May I have a motion to approve the application to the School Budget Review Committee in the amount of $2,582.69 for special education administrative costs associated with the Grand Wood Consortium? So moved. Seconded. Auntie McGinnis, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. The motion carries 7-0. Um, agenda item 4.08 is simply uh, providing you with um, the assignments for our upcoming board book study uh, but with uh, the board members, board directors, as well as uh, most of the district level administrators. Uh, back in, I think, the 2017-2018 school year, this book had been uh, recommended by another board member when we were out in uh, at the Iowa Association of School Boards meeting, and so we used it uh, for a book study with a former board and really enjoyed it. It's an easy read and an enjoyable read because it's all predicated on really kind of like case studies or actual examples of things that can and do happen um, at the board table or with board members and thought it would be an enjoyable way as it was back then to... Um, review things like the roles and responsibilities of board administration, um, how best to handle inquiries and, and things from the community and such. So I think it'll really lend itself. A large number of our board members went to the ISB uh, workshop and the new board member workshop, and we've got a regional uh, workshop in Ames this week, and uh, this will just kind of fill in some of those gaps for everyone. Questions about your assignment? Basically, we all read the section, but then you speak towards simply the one um, case study that, that's assigned to you. You know, what's, what are the nuts and bolts of it, your reflection. Uh, we move through it usually pretty quick, and if there's any discussion, great. Moving on to finance. Now is the time to... Um, speak to the public hearing that we've just held regarding the matter of the approval and the adoption of the plans and so on. Are there any questions or comments from board members at this time? I would just reiterate that, you know, we started down this road with uh, the plans and design and preliminary cost estimates. Um, around November, I think, November, December, and part of that is due to the fact that there's a lot of um, legal requirements that we have to meet both with construction law and also uh, with the new save um, language that was approved by the state legislature this past year. Um, during that time, we were obviously uh, seeking support from both the city of Marshtown and Martha Ellen Ty to help uh, partner in this project financially and, and otherwise. And so as we headed into the holidays, uh, two things were known that weren't 100% known at the beginning of this uh, project. One was that the city uh, did not feel that at this time they were in a position to commit borrowed funds uh, towards this project for this upcoming year. And then also we uh, found out um, what amount uh, that the Martha Ellen Ty Community Foundation um, graciously uh, granted us for the purpose of essentially covering uh, the costs of the p projected costs for the pickleball courts. So um, we, uh, the project has stayed in, in its entirety uh, the same throughout the whole process. We, however, restructured based on that new reality what the base bid of the project was. So. We downsized what the base bid was based on what we knew our district had the capacity uh, to fund for the coming year. So that's why, in part, we settled on the base bid representing the six new courts that would be immediately to the south of the eight existing courts, which was always part of the plan. It was just the order that these things were going to happen. The original base bid were all 12 courts, so the new courts and 
uh, the uh, construction of the existing courts, but due to the um, funding constraints and that we're not desiring to borrow against future proceeds at this time for this project and we're wanting to use save dollars that are on hand annually and discretionary funds that the board has to, to use. We've downsized the project and essentially are calling it phase one with full intent in the future to move forward with phase two, which in incorporates the reconstruction of the um, eight courts into six courts, um, the spectator area uh, as part of that, uh, the restroom facilities that were referenced um, by the community. Um, and then we have some alternates also that would be the uh, parking lot off 2nd Avenue, uh, the lit parking lot there, and uh, handicap access. And then also um, uh, the possibility of doing lights. So and the, the restructuring of that base bid was exclusively done in order to make sure that the project fit our capacity to fund at this particular point in time. Other comments? Is, uh, is the bathroom thing, is that part of Alt 4? Or where is is that in the future? That would be, that would not be part of the base bid, but it's in the overall package. We're bidding out uh, the entire package in the event that the bids come in to where there's some choice to take on one of the alternates. Um, but, but what we need at a bare minimum are the six new courts so that we can use those new courts in conjunction with the courts that are still uh, competitively playable and safe with the existing facility, and that will be the case until we figure out how to move forward and when we can move forward with phase two. So the restrooms would not be part of that base bid. They're embedded in um, the six north courts and the cost related to that as an alternate. Oh, that, so that is all the old four. Four. Okay. Yes. Good, yeah. good. Good. Okay, good. I have a motion to formally approve and adopt the plan specifications, form of contract, and the estimated total cost for the Marshalltown Community School District Tennis Court Project. Move for approval. Second. Miller. Or Karina. Oh. Miller Ker Hernandez. Karina. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. The motion carries 7 0. Moving on to policies. Um. The three policies that are before you as a first reading that we reviewed at the last meeting have not been changed since that meeting. Um, we had an amendment made to 903.1 school community groups. We put forward a new um, distribution of materials policy by, well, it's not new. We incorporated into the existing policy definitions that of terms that were referenced in that policy that were in the IASB policy that for one reason or another were not included before. And then we had an amendment with some IASB language for 904.2 relative to advertising and promotions. I would recommend approving the first reading of those policies and waiving the second reading. We have 903.1, 903.5R1, and 904.2. May I have a motion to approve these policies as amended? So moved. Second. Heitman Faltus, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same? The motion carries 7 0. As far as the policies for review, um, <coughs> we have the same adjustment that is made on 
for policies that are before you relative to voluntary early retirement incentive program for the various groups. So 314.1 with administrators, 407.6 for teachers, 413.7 for 12 months secretaries, and 413.8 for operations, maintenance, transportation. Um, the change that we made is relative to the stated dates that's in those policies, um, especially this past year where uh, the state's acknowledgement of district certified enrollment was significantly later than normal. And in the last couple years, that date has moved away from when we used to pretty consistently know what it is. We've just Chain, we've taken the date out of it in terms of when the applications are due and just said by the date set annually by the board. So that is the adjustment that is made in all four of those policies. And we can bring those back for first reading if you uh, need. Does the board want those brought back or can we approve this time as long as it's the same change and all? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. okay with approving them. Yeah. I have a motion to approve 314.1, 407.6, 413.7, as amended and waive the second reading. So moved. Seconded. Miller, McGinnis, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. The motion carries 7-0. 407.3 relative to retirement is uh, we've added a line to our existing policy, which was predicated on IASB language. Uh, IASB in a recent policy primer had recommended that we add the statement that a letter of retirement from an employee should state the employee's desire to retire and be witnessed by another party other than the principal or the superintendent. So. Um, that would be a change, and that would come back for a first reading. Mr. Miller. Yep. I had uh, two policies under initial review, 904.4, called Money Raising Activities in the Schools. Um, it's been recommended that we delete that policy because most of it's already covered, in policy 504.5 called student fundraising. And so the recommendation is to delete 904.4, pull one sentence out of that, and put it into 504.5, which you can see. Um, so uh, that would need to come back, I think, at the next meeting. But that's the recommendation on that one. Any questions there before moving on? Um, we can, however, move to delete 904.4 tonight okay if you would do that okay i would move for the deletion of 904.4 second miller heitman all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed the same motion carries seven zero the uh, next one i was asked to review is 905.1 called community use of school facilities and uh uh, after reviewing this, Dr. Schutte has recommended that we um, adopt the IASB language and pull some of the language out of the old policy and put it into the IASB policy. Um, yeah, so I want to talk specifically about which language? Yeah, basically in our existing policy, we're taking all of uh, point number eight and we're embedding that in the regulation 905.1. A lot of our policy really was more regulation oriented. So we're recommending, as Mike said, adopting IASB's policy 905.1 and then embedding, uh, deleting our existing policy, but pulling um, point eight out of there, which is really a regulation as it relates to uh, use of facilities by churches, and we're embedding that in 905.1 R1 at the end, um, in addition to incorporating some IASB language in the same topics and or bullet points that already existed in that regulation, if that makes sense. 
So we're amending 905.1R based on IASB language as well as taking some of the language from the proposed deleted policy and putting it in there. So it would need to come back two weeks from now. So 905.1 is old and new. Mm -hmm. Right. And 905.1R1 is amended. Amended with IASB. And some of our 905. Okay. So both will come back at the next meeting. Okay. Looking at communications, um, are there any items of note? Okay, thank you. Looking at reminders, uh, the first board meeting in February has been changed to Tuesday, February 4th due to the caucuses being held on the 3rd. Thank you. We have upcoming committee meetings. And do you have off the top of your head the dates for those curricular visits? They're just listed as visit number five at Lenahan at nine, but it doesn't give a date. There's a, there's a date. They're in the computer. Okay. All right. Maybe she added it later. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Will you send have somebody send like a Outlook invitation to us? Or at least a reminder. For the one on the third. For all of them, because these were originally sent out before we had new <coughs> members. Maybe I didn't get invited. So maybe we just need to re-invite, send out an invitation for all of those curricular visits for the rest of the year then. Yeah, I usually get invited, but a lot of times in the morning when I'm working. Just send them out. Um, Karina has two policies for the next meeting. Three cheers, yay. <laughs> um, and you will remind Woodbury that their school showcase is on the fourth and not the third? Question mark? Mm -hmm. Looking um, also as a reminder, um, those going to Thursday night's meeting in Ames will meet here at Central Office at 4 o'clock. And we will all ride together. Dr. Schutte is chauffeuring us. I think you received a reminder of that today, but didn't have a time as to when we would be leaving. What have we done tonight that improves the education for the students in the district? Well, we improved the at-risk budget. I really enjoyed listening to the high school presentation and all the options they have. And actually, I don't really actually know what the splash pad is, but I was impressed by their presentation about why it was needed and how it would be expected to be operated. I enjoyed it as well. It was good to hear from Dr. Stevenson about the kids who have the, will get the seal of biliteracy. Yeah, that's cool. And that we have more. Okay, before we move on to our closed sessions, my quote for this evening comes from Saji Eji Yemeni. Okay. I don't know whether I pronounced it right or not, but that's what we're going to go with. Um, Saji, pardon me? 
<laughs> He's not here to complain. So. <laughs> Saji is um, an author, a professional speaker, and a motivational teacher with his own company on providing um, growth trainings. And he says, you are either supporting the vision or supporting division. What? You are either supporting the vision or supporting division. Oh, I got it. One more time? <laughs> no, I got division. Him. <laughs> I listened to a podcast by Saji, and he's an interesting gentleman. Um, a hearing on the suspension or expulsion of a student is provided by Section 21.5. 1E of the Code of Iowa. Second. McGinnis Miller, all in favor signify by, oh, sorry, roll call. Baltus? Present. Heitman? Yes. Hernandez? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Miller? Yes. Niblock? Yes. Unteed? Yes. Are you going to take a quick bathroom break? Let's do this. 